Hello, Commanders. Welcome to the Command Table. I am Mathermar, and we are proceeding with our journey walkthrough. We're moving on to Map 2 of the Arcane Desert, and starting with the first five battles of Map 2, which is 221 through 225. Before we get started, if you would please be so kind as to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you're looking to receive notifications when I drop new videos. Also, if you have any questions or looking for alternative units to use, please feel free to use the comments below. All right, let's go ahead and dive right in. We have level 221. This one, uh, I actually saw on Discord some folks were having trouble with this, so hopefully this helps them out. I have uh, tried to counter all of these arcane blades and wraiths by using two sets of plague bearers with two draining spirits that are not very easy to see, but they are there. Uh, so all of these melee units are going to converge at this one spot, and they're going to get tagged with plague, hopefully, which will start to spread, which will slow them down and do damage over time, and then these draining spirits are going to do the bulk of the work from there. So everything's going to come down to this spot, get plagued and tagged with the draining spirits. Then they're going to meet these thorn guards, which will be slowly moving forward, and they'll start to beat themselves to death on that. I've got the Valkyrie way down here in the corner to keep at least one of those thorn guards alive for as long as possible. The whole while, this Ember Fiend is going to be doing damage from a distance, so everything's going to have to run down here first, get hung up on the thorn guards, then come all the way to the corner to kill the Valkyrie, and then they would have to run all the way up here to get to the Ember Fiend. And once they're tagged with Plague, that's going to take a long time. That's going to allow the Draining Spirits to do their best work, especially if Frenzy pops. So you notice everything except for a couple of Arcane Blades, and uh, my Ember Fiend goes down. So it, it was... Well intended, but didn't quite work the way that I'd hoped, but still worked. So uh, feel free to tweak that to better suit your purposes. All right, battle 222. Okay, we have a ranged group in the back with a barrier monk and three archers. And we've got two monster hunters, three sets of shield bearers, and eternal champions. So we've been using Mind Shrooms and Bomb Bots on the Eternal Champions, but uh, Plague and Draining Spirits work just as well. So I've got my two sets of Assassins to take out the bulk of this group in the back, and then I've got the Arcane Archers and uh, Crystal Spire with, I think there's a Freezing Trap down there. Either that or it's the Ember Fiend, I, I don't recall. We'll have to play it to see. But the theory is that everything will run into this, and uh, they'll start to take damage from Plague and the Draining Spirits. Then they'll run to get the Arcane Archers, which are at the top, and then they'll have to run all the way down here to get to the Crystal Spire. So that was the thought process behind that one, just to kind of delay things and make it take as long as possible. So everything's going down fairly quickly, might not even have to worry about them getting to my backline units. Yep, looks like it's game over. Bloop bloop, and easy cleanup. Alright, so even if they had gotten to those arcane archers, it was a long road, especially with that plague debuff, to get to that bottom crystal spire, and by then Frenzy would have shredded it to pieces. All right, let's have a look. We have a Death Knight, a Mind Corruptor, two Brutes, two Faceless Knights, and two sets of Plague Bearers. So I didn't change a whole heck of a lot on this one. I did switch out the Arcane Archers for an Ember Fiend just to get the burn damage. There's a lot of very uh, high health units between the Faceless Knights and the Brutes. So I figured the burn damage would be more effective in grinding them down. Uh, this is one of my pet peeves when somebody puts conflicting debuffs on, but uh, the, I don't feel bad about it in this particular case because I don't have Fire Knights. 
because those are the only other chaos frontline melee units. So what I want to accomplish here is just have these plague bearers act as a special delivery squad to drop off the uh, draining spirits. Then from there, the burn debuff will take over and do percentage-based damage while the draining spirits are doing a sustained damage over time. The assassins are going to take out the death knight and the uh, mind corruptor. And then this is just my contingency plan. Everything's going to be up on this top end, which means they're going to gravitate towards that ember fiend before running all the way to the back and coming all the way down here. And by then, Frenzy will hit and that crystal spire is going to be a uh, force to be reckoned with. So I don't quite get the death knight, but uh, it runs right up into the draining spirit and does not last much longer. Oh, got tagged with a burn as well from the Ember Fiend. So now everything is uh, slowly withering away. And yeah, I, I thought that it would all end up towards the top, but it doesn't really matter at that point. All right, let's move on to 224. Okay, we have Nature's Wrath. We have one, two, three sets of Warhounds. We've got two Crystal Spires, two Paladins, and what looks like three sets. Yeah, one, two, three sets of Dire Wolves in their Warthog form or whatever it is. Um, I'm, again, I'm kind of sticking with this same trick with that uh, last ditch effort in the very bottom corner to take things out when frenzy mode pops. So this is a delay tactic that I'm going to be using. I'm going to have the assassins there to take out the crystal spires uh, just because I won't have any mobile ranged units. So everything's going to run from here up into these plague bearers and get tagged with the draining spirits. They're going to be delayed by this second group of plague bearers that will arrive, that will arrive later and it's better to put them back and to give them time to walk over so that they take zero damage while these ones are holding off the other ones. Then these Drizzen Warriors are going to pop up on the other side and come and meet them from this other end, which is going to cause everybody to run back slightly, buying more time because then they'll then have to run all the way back over here and down to get to the Crystal Spires. So a lot of tactics involved in this one. Uh, it's a very common tactic that you'll see in a lot of ranked play that forces uh, things to run around and buys time to get to Frenzy, where uh, some units really shine. So, yep, there they go. They run all the way back, and that Paladin probably isn't even going to get halfway to the Crystal Spires. Nope, there it goes. All right. Moving on to 225... Okay, here we have a lot of ranged units. We've got six, no, five. Five groups of archers in the back with two barrier monks, two earth elementals, and a brute. So lots of tanky units up front with some very heavy range damage in the back. So uh, what I decided to do for this one was that I would put these two assassins to start clearing through the way back as quickly as possible. And I think I just totally disregarded the barrier monks and tried to go for a placement that would clear out as many archers as I could. Then I've got these risen warriors to come in and finish up the job. And these frontline units are just going to run into this uh, group of thorn guards. And anytime anything pops, like the earth elementals, that should get bogged down in the uh, entangling roots. This Valkyrie is going to keep at least one of the Thorn Guards alive, and the two Crystal Spires are going to do a great job of burning through all the various splits. So let's go ahead and run. All right. Oh, no, actually, I did go for the Barrier Monks. Never mind. And there goes the Risen Warriors to clean up the rest of it. Um... The Crystal Spires are able to reach everything just fine. Uh, a couple of the splits pop a little further back and get drawn back by the Risen Warriors, but they'll ultimately end up in range. It's just a matter of time. That one Thorn Guard is all you need. 
everything just beats themselves to death on it. And uh, would have been nice if that brute got a little bit closer, would have sped things up. So there it is. We will call it here for now and we'll get to the next five shortly. If you would be so kind, please do like and subscribe. And also check out the commandtable.com where we have tutorials, raid strats, and coming soon we will have merchandise and a comic strip. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.